him back. Yeah, I looked up and suddenly realized that the, uh, the, the, what, what do we call this? The screen manager <laughs> was saying, oh, hey, we're running an ad right now. So, okay, well, let's take a break then. Let's, uh, enforce breaks. Sure. Okay. Um, I think what I was saying before though, right? So it looks like we're saving the cursor. Like when it, when it, when the task worker calls the thing that's doing the actual work, we're saving this cursor and task payload, but this doesn't actually get saved out anywhere. This is just like in memory. Um, we don't actually save this back to Redis. So that will mean, um, it's probably a good thing that we're, we're like special casing. It's only if it's a 503 error that we do this. Um, so for the specific use case that I'm trying to solve, right, like address right now, which is this, this YouTube upload API, we don't use the cursor. Like it's a, it's a one and done sort of thing. Whereas the, um, the audio transcription and the um, silence detection are cursor based, but we don't really have to worry about quotas because those are like internal services. They're not relying on an external thing. So I think that's fine. Um, so what do we need to do now? So we're, we're handling the 503 specifically. We're saying, okay, if it's a 503, we're, we're gonna handle it. We're gonna figure out how long we need to wait. And then we also set the task status back to queued. So it's just a normal task again. We put it back onto the normal queue so that we can um, process it. We remove it from the temporary queue so that that fail safe isn't not needed anymore because it's, it's put back onto the main queue. And then we break out of this inner loop to say, okay, we're done with this task for now. Um, so I have a list of things to do for this and we'll see how we're, we're doing. Define what a retry later error type being returned from the microservice should look like. So we did that. It's a 503 error. It may or may not have a retry after HTTP header. Make the task worker respect that error and save that status, right? So that's what we were just doing. Make the task workers skip over tasks that aren't ready to be run yet. So this will be this will be the next thing. Um, and then there is another thing we need to do, which is to um, make the, the YouTube uh, upload uh, endpoint um, return a uh, 503 error when the quota is exceeded. So that'll be the, the next thing. It should be the last thing, I think. Uh, it's gonna be interesting because I think what we're gonna have to do is essentially make the retry after header be like a day from now for it to work, which will be fun to test. Uh, anyway, okay. It doesn't like, oh, I see. It doesn't like the double star there because it's not a rest comment. Okay. So the task worker, um, right here at the beginning, like w once this, this, this code runs, we, you know, we get our connection to Redis. Um, we, um, set up, so I highlighted the wrong thing. We get our connection to Redis, we set up our HTTP client, uh, we get some environment variables, we set some settings, uh, and we loop, and we take the first task off of the queue. Now, maybe there's a better way of doing this, where we have a queue, we have like, I guess effectively this is a priority queue, is what we're trying to model here. Um, Previously, up until now, right, we just have a first in, first out queue with no priority. So the first thing in is the, the first thing to process, 
we try to process it and move on to the next thing. If we have multiple workers, they can each take a thing from the queue. They'll take from, you know, one end of it. Um, and they just work their way through as that there are tasks available that they can take. But now what I want to do is I want to do more than that. I want to only take a task from the queue if it's the rightmost task, but the retry timestamp or whatever I call the field, um, it's buried instead of here. I think it's called retry timestamp. Yeah, retry timestamp is less than, is either non-existent or is less than the current date and time. Mm. Um, and that is something I don't think, uh, I don't think that, um, there might not be a good way of doing that, right? So if we look at what, uh, we go back here, pop task. And we looked at this already, right? We're using this beyond move operation. Pop an element from a list, push it to another list and return it, or block until one is available. Uh, so, I might still have a tab with the Reddit stocks open somewhere. Uh, and if not, I can just Google for one. Ooh. Uh, yep, yeah, nope. Why Aerospace beats Redis. <laughs> Gosh, it's been a while since I've seen anything about Aerospike. Uh, I can't even open this link because I have a uh, pie hole on my network. So sponsored links just go nowhere. I didn't need Redis. I don't, I don't need this either. Uh, here we go, just docs, commands. Uh, all right, so we want so what I'm using right now is BL move. So BL move takes a source and a destination and then directions left and right, right and left. It's a blocking variant of L move. When the source contains elements, this command behaves exactly like L move. When in, used inside of a multi exec block, this command behaves exactly like L move. When source is empty, uh, so when like source is a key, right? That refers to uh, a list, presumably, uh, in Redis, in your Redis server. So if that list is empty, Redis will block the connection until another client pushes to it or until timeout. And we use a timeout at zero, so we just wait forever. So this is a, a very nice, like, we can, if the task list is mostly empty, we have a, uh, a way of having Redis unblock the task worker when there are tasks. So we're not spinning, checking, we're just um, waiting for like IO. Um, we're waiting for that network traffic back from the server, which should be a very um, like under the hood, presumably there's like a uh, operating system level Thing that our client code is calling that's waiting for network traffic from Redis and the operating system isn't going to even run that Rust program. It's not going to return a flow of control back to the, the program until that happens. It's uh, a few layers down and like uh, kind of abstraction of what's going on here. But that's the idea for, for blocking. Pattern, reliable queue. Yeah. Um, so we, we break all that <laughs> when we introduce the idea that, hey, the things that are in the list, we don't care about them if they uh, have a timestamp, like if the thing in the list, which refers to another record, inside of that record, the timestamp is, you know, some other thing, uh, it's a future date, then we don't want to actually process it. Um, so,
the most naive way, as in uh, another way of putting this, is a way of handling this situation that's going to involve the fewest number of changes, but it's probably not going to be great in terms of all of those things that I was just talking about, how it's really cool, how it will wait until things happen, is in pop task, like we we get we call BL move, we get the task key, we get the task data, and then here I just check, hey, yeah, what about exactly? That that is exactly what um that that is a better solution probably. Um, let me just let me just finish the thought and we'll we'll look into. I've never done a priority cube with Redis, so I think we'll have to figure out how to do that. But if if uh, if we want to like look at the naive solution, the naive solution is to say uh, check if uh, retry uh, time timestamp is set and if it's not in the past. Right. There is a z-score. Interesting. Okay. You may know more than me then. Um, so if if the retry chance retry timestamp is in the future, it will put the task back onto the queue. So we'll put it back to the other end. Um, and then I guess we attempt to pop again. This is this is potentially an infinite loop. So this is bad. Um, Like imagine the task, the, the task queue only one, had one task in it, but that task is set with a retry timestamp of tomorrow. Then um, we are going to have a stack overflow, right? So if we wanted to do this, we would need to like, have a guard that like, oh, is there, um, are we like seeing the same things? And it could be, it could be worse. Like it could be, like there could be three tasks and they're all not ready to be worked on until tomorrow, right? Um, and we could churn through those. So it wouldn't be enough to just say, oh, are we seeing the same one over and over again? No, we'd have to like deal with that. Um, yeah, the, the naive solution is, is not, is very naive. <laughs> uh, okay, so priority queues. Okay, so Redis is often used as a messaging server to implement processing and background jobs. Yeah. Um, However, in this context, the obtain queue is not reliable as messages can be lost. Network problem. BL move offers a way to avoid this problem. LRIM command to remove the message. Additional client may monitor the processing. Yep. Oh yeah, so that's the other thing with the uh, the temp queue, right? Is that we can monitor for things that set in the temp queue for too long and then move them back into the, the um, See here, they call it the processing list. I called it the temp queue. Um, alternative would be to see something like uh, Sidekick handles this. Yes. Uh, another alternative would be like a, a larger queuing um, solution that has like, that's like dedicated for this purpose. Um, hmm. The first, the first place my brain goes, because of how much time I spend in, in like AWS land, is like SQS. But I don't think SQS really handles like the the priority queue situation either. Um, let's uh, let's let's Google. Let me let me actually hold on. <laughs> let me go over into a different window and then I'll Google. Redis um, priority queue. 
Uh, can I explain the problem to solve? Yes. So, um, fundamentally, so I'll, I'll take it from a, a, like a few layers up and <laughs> work down. Um, so there is a limit to the, the number of videos I can upload in a day to Google, to, to YouTube. This is the same thing. Um, and so I have like, Generally, when I'm processing, like turning VODs into episodes to upload to YouTube, I have dozens, right? Because I'll take like several weeks of VODs and because I'm way behind, <laughs> I'll take several weeks of VODs and I'll chop them up into like dozens of episodes and I'll try to upload them. Well, I can only upload like um, maybe six a day because each upload uses, uh, was it 1600? units of quota and I have 10,000 a day. So what I want to do is have the, the, this partnership between the YouTube upload service and the task API coordinate um, uploading. Like I want to queue up all of the uploads. And then once I run out of quota, the YouTube upload service will tell the task service, you need to wait on this because it's out of quota and it will set a retry and it will retry in a day. Um, and so I can have, I'm going to change my background task queuing system from something that is, um, just work through all the tasks as quickly as possible, um, into something where there will be tasks that may take multiple days to be able to be uploaded. Uh, because of this quota. So the solution for that, like the, 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 um, the manifestation of how those two services are, are going to interact is that the, um, the YouTube upload service is going to return back when, when it gets a quota error from YouTube, it's going to return to the task API or to the task worker rather, um, that it got a, it, it's going to return a 503 error. Yes. And it's going to return a timestamp for when the task service, the task worker should try again to make that API call and do that upload, uh, which will be like a day later. Um, so the issue is how do we prioritize taking items from the queue so that we're not spinning looking at these same tasks that can't be worked on and instead look at tasks and only tasks that can be worked on um, and once time elapses we can work on those new things um, and that's why i was googling redis priority queue uh, and we'll see Maybe I'll try Z-score since Brainless, you mentioned that. Uh, sorted by score set. All right, so this is gonna be, well, it's all bright, right? No dark modes. Okay. Um, Z, when multiple elements have the same score, but a sorted set, oh, sorted sets. Uh, what about an in-progress set? An element is dequeued only once the task is successful. Um, hmm. Hmm. So... Could, I think I know what you mean. And effectively that temporary queue is sort of like the in progress set. It's not, it's not a set, it's a list, but um, the issue is that I think that could work if you have one task worker.
like if we if uh so here's a scenario right so you have you have a single task that has a it's 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 not supposed to start you're not supposed to work on it until tomorrow you Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think that's really straightforward, right? So then you ha you had like two workers, they both brought in these other tasks that could be worked on, they work on them, and then, okay, well then there's room, right, in that in-progress set. You would bring on this new task. You essentially you need to DQ anyway with multiple workers pushing in the in-progress and queuing back it failed, yeah. Um... Like you could have, I guess what you would need is you would need some kind of gatekeeper. Like if you had, so instead of having a main, um, like instead of having the task worker, like, so right now there's one queue that the task worker DQs from and then that same task queue is what the task API in queues into. Um, if you had two queues, and then you have like this gatekeeper that scans over the first one and take tasks that are ready and puts them into the second. And then the task workers work out of that second queue. Um, then I guess that first queue could be sorted. Is this even necessary versus like, can our queue be a sorted set? What is a sorted set? It's a collection of unique strings ordered by an associated score. When more than one string has the same score, the strings are ordered lexicographically. Some use cases include leader, leaderboards and rate limiters. Um, so. How would this work? So the issue with the sorted set is that okay, yeah, every element in the sorted set is associated with a floating point value. Elements are sort in the sorted set are taken in order. Um, order is populated with the data structure. Order according to the following rule: if A and B are two elements with a different score, then A greater than B. If yep. If they have exactly the same score, then we're just looking at the key, the, the values of the strings. Um, so Z add adds the key and the score to this key. Or sorry, this the string and the score to this key. So instead of using a list, we could use a sorted set to maintain. Hmm. Oh, here's what you do. The score is a timestamp. How, how big can this number be? <laughs> You were typing that. Great minds think alike. Um, how big can the number be? The score. Uh, specify scores. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Key doesn't exist. 
Um, so the other thing is that the this, this member, so the string should be unique, right? Because it will be the key of the task. So we won't have repeats either. Um, if the key does not exist, the new sort set, okay, yeah. And then sort of set was empty. Uh, if keys is all so the errors returned, score value should be the string representation of a double precision floating point number. Uh, positive infinity and negative infinity values are valid values as well. Interesting. That that is actually kind of interesting. Um, not for this use case, but just in general, thinking about like um, have a task that runs when everything else is done. Um, okay, so I think we could fit a timestamp into a double precision floating point number. Um, and then the things that have the lowest timestamp are the things that are closest to being ready to be done or are already. So Previously, what I was thinking was that only things that have this retry situation would have that retry value. Um, hmm, I have to change some things. So when we add anything into our queue, which would actually be the sorted set instead of a list, we would give it a score based on the current, the the number of seconds since, um, you know, January 1st, midnight, January 1st, 1970, um, I guess, uh, as is tradition. And then that would be the score. And so the thing with the lowest score would be the thing that we would take. Um, using that Z range operation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if if we if we need to do a retry, um, I mean, because the when we get to the point where we need to like retry or set it up for a retry later, it'll it won't be in the sorted set anymore. We'll have removed it. Um, so we will add it back in, and we'll just set a new score that is the the offset value. We're already calculating like the timestamp anyway. Uh, or we're calculating um, a, a representation of the date time. We can we can turn it back into an integer. Um, and then Ascending or in ascending way, and the same element only exists a single time. No repeated elements are permitted. The score can be modified both by Z add will update the element score and as a set effect its position, and by Z anchor by that can be used in order to update the score relative. I don't think we'll need to do that. Um, current score of element can be retrieved using the Z score, score command. It can also be used to verify if an element already exists or not. Um, yeah, different elements can have the same score. That's fine, and I don't care about the order. Um, and then yeah, Z range can be used to pull things from the set. Z pop min, you say? That that sounds likely. <laughs> Time complexity is O log n times M. So N is the number of elements in the sorted set, M uh, being the number of elements popped. That's interesting. Why is that not a constant time operation? Okay. Z pop min and max are the same. Yeah.
so removes and returns up to count members with the lowest scores in the sorted set. I mean, I guess I kind of just assumed the internal representation would be... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you can have multiple things with the same score. So it can't just be a list. It can't be like an array where you can just, you know, index it and chop it off. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Still, it's not too bad. Okay. So maybe Z pop men. Hmm. So what would we have to change? So, uh, a few things and a few places. <laughs> Implement that under the, yeah, something like that. I, I don't know. All right, so in task API, uh, we, mm, excuse me. So, um, Really, the only thing that changes is how we're interacting with the task queue itself, um, which um, delete handler, get one, get list, tasks, uh, update handler. Oh, create handler, there it is. Create handler is the thing. Uh, so we, yeah, to do, move this into an axiom extractor, we should do that. Uh, Q name, All right? So Q name is the name of this main Q, which is, I guess, going to become a sorted set. Um, task counter doesn't have anything to do with that. That's how we're like generating keys for the task record itself. Um, and it's here that we add the task key, task key to the Q. Um, so now that's two places where I think that's going on, is we're also doing that here. Con L push, Q name, task key. Um, we're doing it more nicely here. <laughs> um, okay, so I think what I wanna do is I'm going to Make a function. Uh, okay, and we provide a Q name and a task, and that that looks right. And then what I want to do is I'm going to replace this with this call to this function. Like so. And we'll import that. And then it's complaining because it takes the connection as well. We need to do here? Do we need to do like this? And this is actually just the task. Okay, and then okay, and then error. And then we don't need this extra tracing here because we we do that in the uh, in the the library function. Which means we can just do this. Great. Update the other side of this as well to call Q task. Great. Might make it a little bit easier to uh, right, right. So anyway, so we're kind of tracing through how what what's going on here. So we. Um, This is one place where we're touching that queue. 
Will, will this be sufficient? As in, if I were to change this to use a sorted set and we want to populate a score on the quote unquote Q to make like this priority Q thing. Um, I, hmm, where is task coming from? Do we have some code somewhere that's like, there we go, create task. Okay, and that's also coming from our, our library, task worker library uh, file. Um, alternative, normal queue, a key for specifying the next time the queue can be dequeued. Yeah. The issue would be then that we would have to change like the, we would, that would still, we would need to change the FIFO nature or we'd have to like reorder things. I think that would be more complex. Um, because I would still want to be able to do other things. Like it's more than just the video uploads that are going through this queue. Like I don't have separate, I could have separate queues for different kinds of work. Um, but I chose not to do that. All right, I didn't, it didn't occur to me that would be something I would want to do. And I, I don't know that I want to go down that, that road at this point. It's an option. Um, then what we'd have to have like different workers for different queues. And so we would have a bunch of idle processes, even more idle processes, which is not a bad thing necessarily, but I think this will be good. Um, I'm just kind of trying to think through like create task. I would in the, the task struct. I forgot to add swap. Yes. Yeah. It's, you can, you know, if you have enough Ram, you could probably get along quite a, quite well, uh, for a bit. <laughs> so probably change the task struct to add a, um, to add that retry um, timestamp, or maybe retry timestamp is not even a good word for this idea of like, um, don't process me until it's just 16 gigabytes. It's a lot. <laughs> it used to be a lot. How much RAM does this computer have? It's either 32 or 64, I forget. It was actually um, on the, my, my Twitch page, there's actually a link to like the PC specs for this PC um, somewhere down there. Hmm. So a thing anyway, that represents when should this task don't, uh, used to be now stuff, yeah. Um, when this task should be don't process this task before yeah browsers browsers eat memory um and then so then that would be handled in create task where it would probably just capture the current date and time and stick it inside of the task um like it is with last updated and then in queue task that would be read from the task and be used to, instead of l push it would be z add or whatever that, that command is. I was trying to open a game to do some quick housekeeping and the OS froze. Yeah. That can happen. Um, and then, so that's, that's the, that's kind of the ingestion side of getting stuff queued up. And then in task worker, that's where we are popping task. And so pop task would be changed to 
Um, use the thing that you mentioned before. Uh, Z-pop men. And then what we would do is we would Z-pop men and then check to see if the, the score is, that timestamp is um, after now. And if it's after now, uh, we would put it back in to the queue and to the, the, the set um, and something. We could probably just spin on that. Um, might just have the worker sleep for a little bit. That won't be too bad, right? You know, if we had like a thousand worker processes, that would kind of suck because they would all, <laughs> they'd be like, hey, give me a, a thing. And then, oh, like, oh, okay, it fetches it, pulls it out. And then, um, oh, that's a question. So, uh, Z Pop Men doesn't block. So, what if, what if the key is empty? then it would have returned an empty list, right? Because it returns an array of popped elements and scores. I don't suppose there's a, 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 a ZB or, or BZ popman. Aha, there is. the blocking ver version because it blocks the connection while when there are no members to pop from any of the given sorted sets a member with the lowest score is popped from the first sorted set that is not empty with the given keys being checked in the order that they were given it's identical to the BL pop with the only difference being the data structure being popped from yes Okay. But it's, um, what, what else we got? Is that it for? What was the other command? This this is yeah, Z pop men, B Z pop men. Okay. B Z pop max, B Z M pop. What is B Z M pop? Z M pop. Pops one or more elements that are member square pairs from the first not empty sort set of the provider list. Similar to the following, yeah, okay. Okay, so it's just like a single command that's more flexible. Okay, cool. I see, and this is the blocking equivalent. I see, I see. Okay. So we would use BZ pop men here. Um, but then it does not do what BL move does, where we are simultaneously taking thing from Q and putting it onto temp Q. I would still want to do that, but I would have to do that manually. a multi-exec block. There are transactions. Oh, 
might be worth reading about at some point. Okay, so let's let's. I don't I don't have a ton of time left today to work on this, and uh, food will be here eventually. <laughs> but um, let's let's kind of like explore what this might look like, right? So, uh, and I think we'll pick this up afterwards. So I I think the good news is that I shouldn't need to significantly change um, much of anything. Like, I think I can get away with... Um, hmm. So now we have that. So this is going to need to change, I think. Is task immutable here? Where are we getting to? Yeah, it is a mutable task. Okay. So I think instead of the set task reach, I'm only calling this one place, right? So I think this function is going to go away. Bye. Um, and then <laughs> we're going to do task dot. Um, so, hmm, I don't like the word retry timestamp. That, that doesn't make sense given the overall context of how we're doing things now. I still want to store it in the task. I'm going to call it, um, what is a good word here? Let's get rid of this. Store the value that represents the point in time before which processed. Still likes retry timestamp. Um, is there a better word? Threshold. Um, guard. Word associations. Naming is hard. Um, typing is also hard. No, quit saying. See, 
here's what we're gonna do. Maybe. Okay. Where do we use the word retry timestamp now? It's not about the retry app, but um, run, run after. Like that the uh, the copilot suggestions don't abide by the the uh, mm, conventions of the rest of the code uh, after. There we go. Well, that that was not a very smart renaming, but I get it because that X specifically ran, referred to this and not this or this. Nonetheless. Um, yeah, I mean, I, if I'm going to do that, I can just do this. Now, it doesn't like that because there's no field called run after, but we can fix that. I think run at is is kind of nice too. That was kind of the, the that underscore at kind of was inspirational, um, but I don't want it to run at a point in time. I think after is much clearer about about what the nature of that is, um, and this is not going to be a string. It's going to be a chrono um, take time. And then when we load this from the hash map, we'll convert. Um, we're gonna do data get. So this has to read the value from the hash. Like we're not gonna be able to have access to the score because the score is something that is part of the uh, the the quote unquote Q uh, that is the sorted set that has the score. So we have to have like a separate copy of it. Um, and then kind of like map that to convert it into uh, a chrono take time. Um, dot. Da, 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 da. We get rid of this, and then it's an option of a string and okay. We'll have to fix that error, but uh, we're gonna do that uh, on the next coding stream because we are just about out of time for today, uh, and I must get some lunch, which is why we're about out of time today. <laughs> All right, so um, let's go find someone to raid. How about that? Uh, between ZRAM and swap file? <laughs> what is ZRAM? Uh, yeah, that'd be really great. Could I, so the raid channel thing is okay. Might raid Cetilix, who just started streaming not too long ago today and is doing coding. I think it's C sharp. 
Might as well tell. I'm just not sure if I'll have a negative interaction with I have no idea. <laughs> up and everything uh yeah it looks like that could be c sharp so let's, uh, let's go get a raid message going and then we'll uh get this raid going all right so thanks everyone for coming out to the stream today it's been so great to to have people here and uh uh, along with me while I'm trying to figure stuff out and giving me ideas and uh, yeah all right so we got uh, code raid power uh, API C unity yeah looks good code dream alive uh, all right so oh you got it. All right, so uh, we're gonna go over to uh, Settlex's stream um, here in a couple of seconds, just making sure this is uh, gonna be ready. And um, so, uh, if all goes to plan, the next stream will be tomorrow evening, doing some uh, Red Tech New Horizons modded Minecraft stuff, uh, and uh, trying to figure out how to move things along and that uh and hopefully next friday stream won't get canceled sorry that last friday stream was um we'll do some more mind over magic all right looks like we're ready to go so see you over there thanks again 